formation de pilote a pilot's training has become very long and complicated. Initially, it begins with a university degree followed by a commercial pilot's training, mainly theoretical, with a practical part thrown in. You don't get the experience to obtain your final license. Next comes a training period that's specific to the Air Force. It's only after around six years that you reach the FA-18 stage with a conversion course that lasts almost a year. Then you go to a tactical training course to become operationally qualified. So you travel a long road before you become operational in an FA-18. There's a long list of exams, simple flights, familiarization, test flights, technical flights, simulated breakdowns with the technical systems disengaged to ensure you're able to operate or land the aircraft without its systems. All this means the pilot has to fly frequently. The machine gives so much and has so many capabilities that will just get better over the next few years. Man really is the weak link in the chain. But that's where all the challenge of the job resides, to be able to work at it and to advance and get to a point where you best manage these systems, getting to know them and getting the most out of them. You have to work really hard. You have to have very specific qualities so that one day you can finally get into the cockpit. And that's what makes people dream, I think.
You always hear people speaking of the duo, man and machine. But with the FA-18, you might almost speak of a trio, because the computer is the interface between the man and the machine. This computer unlocks the machine's capacities. Its capacities to climb are phenomenal, almost to the point of defying the laws of physics. The computer link between the man and the aircraft means you can make the machine climb back down whilst flying backwards, stop at high altitude, make it flip over or change direction. The pilot gives the command, the computer calculates how many degrees it takes for the controls to execute the turn. The whole job of the pilot is to push things as far as possible whilst respecting the limits. The pilot must trust his controls and he can be increasingly confident that the information he's receiving is correct. There are two or three controls that indicate the same thing. In managing all this information, cockpit management, you can check that all the information supplied is correct. With these high-tech planes, the systems function so much faster than man, so much information is processed. So the problem lies in how to manage all this data, the sheer quantity of it.
The FA-18 has enormous technical capacities. It is long-range, it flies high and fast. With the FA-18, the Air Force has found a dignified European role for Switzerland, one that entails being a proper partner for the various European Air Forces. With the current threat still there, though less visible, with dangers less obvious calling on means that are difficult to control, communication technologies, networks and the Internet, the FA-18 is an appropriate response in its own field of securing our airspace.
permet effectivement d'engager de, des contacts à très grande distance, mais on s'aperçoit aussi que, avec cette capacité, euh, les règles d'engagement sur les théâtres font que le travail du pilote de combat. Technology allows combat to take place at great distances, but you realize that in conflict zones, this capacity makes the work of a pilot even more complicated because he is part of an aerial defense chain, the armed wing in the service of the President of the Republic or the Confederation. At each stage of a conflict, he has to continue to respect orders and adapt his behavior accordingly. With the extended range of his firepower, it can become complicated and controls cannot always replace the human eye, a visual identification. Et, et ça demande un travail de réflexion dans l'avion qui est euh, assez intensif parfois, en fonction de la complexité des règles d'engagement. On a beau avoir des capteurs ou des systèmes très perfectionnés quand il faut aller identifier un avion, pour le moment, la technique ne permet pas d'avoir la certitude qu'a l'homme avec son avion.
Above all, it's a passion, a 100% commitment to aviation, whether you be American, Russian, or some other nationality. Pilots have a passion for flight. It's something that emerges clearly in verbal exchanges and conversation. You just feel this love for flying and the third dimension. If the right engine is being rotated with cross speed to provide normal distance operation and the fuel flow on the left engine is reduced below 2,000 pounds, the right engine hydraulic pump may not provide sufficient flow for the rotor of the engine. SRP or the check is required as part of the No matter the experience of the pilot, when he does the refueling, we are all on the same level, no matter whether a very experienced pilot or not. A great level of concentration must be maintained, otherwise an error may be fatal for the plane. This is because if anything breaks, it will go directly into the reactors. We go through regular combat training out of visual range, although our initial training concentrates on mastering combat within visual range. I'd say it's 50-50 between combat training out of visual range and combat at close quarters. Although pilots are professionally adept at both types of engagement, recent conflicts show that it often finishes in the arena of visual combat, so it's out of the question that you lose a fight because you haven't maneuvered the plane in a long time.
Switzerland's geographical position places it at the heart of Europe. It's an extremely busy crossroads for air traffic, with thousands of planes flying over us day and night. It's very important that our airspace is safe. There's always somebody in the air. If not you, then someone else. Being realistic, we have to be conscious of the fact that these days, during any important conference or Olympic Games, it's absolutely essential to guarantee air security over these events, to give them a roof. Switzerland cannot be a void, a hole in the protection taken against terrorism. Terrorism doesn't recognize frontiers or neutrality. It's a completely global and international business, and that's why we have to be vigilant. It's clear that Switzerland has a role to play as a strong link in the third dimension security chain, and thanks to the FA-18, the country is now respected and taken seriously because it knows how to do this type of work. There are several key elements that contribute to our security. There's the senior military staff that has the lead in all engagements, and there are many army units guaranteeing security on the ground. Moreover, it's only if the ground is secure that the FA-18s can go into combat.
There are three missions for our recently reformed army. The first, which we've been focusing on a lot recently, is the support we give to the civil authorities. The second is the defense of Switzerland in case of war. And the third is the promotion of peace in countries or contexts affected by crisis. You realize that behind all this is a strategy that goes back 20 years. In this strategy, the senior military staff has made its first efforts to draw up a doctrine that produces a modern army with the necessary capacities to allow it to carry out all sorts of missions. The senior military staff must now monitor the strict implementation and effective application of all the different elements, doctrines, staffing requirements, equipment needs and instructions. It's a long-term job.
The F-18 has been given the task of guaranteeing the sovereignty of our airspace and of being an aerial policeman, and it's doing this very well. Like a police car, it might be said that it's too powerful, but the day we need to intercept a fast-flying aircraft will need too much power, and even if we rarely use it, the day we do need it, that power should be there. If we don't have it, we're done for. And this is where the experienced pilot, on the front line, sword in hand, has a major role to play. It's when things are going badly that his experience will be measured, his ability to take a key decision that might make all the difference. In aviation, everything happens in seconds. In seconds, he has to make the decision on which everything else depends.